Hi, my friend. Welcome back to this week's episode on the Happiness Happens podcast. I'm Simona, and thank you for being here today for this conversation. I know you probably clicked on this episode because you're like, what does it mean to live with your full heart and live with that full intention? And I really think you're going to enjoy my guest today. His name is Tom, and we talk about what it means to live with your full heart and how that relates to overall happiness. He is a licensed psychologist and life coach with over 35 years of experience. And he's also a best-selling author and yoga instructor. His book is called Full Heart Living Conversations with the Happiest People I Know, and it is an Amazon bestseller. So whether he is counseling, writing, or teaching, his passion for helping people live their best life flows through. And specifically in our conversation today, we are talking about what happiness means to Tom, his background with psychotherapy and how that influenced his work and understanding the deeper need for connection and for living in this very full way, why people make good and bad with quotation marks around them choices, and are they even really good and bad, and finding out why people do certain things and the true intention behind our actions. So I think that you're going to really enjoy this episode because we talk a lot about awareness and we talk a lot about and we talk a little bit about why we are attracting certain things into our life and how our energy plays a key role into that. So join me for this episode. Be sure to share it with someone you love that you know needs to hear this message. Send me a message on Instagram if you're enjoying this episode. I love hearing from you. It makes my day. And if you want to share it and tag me on social media at Happiness Happens Podcast, please do that. I want to share it to my stories and spread spread all of the good vibes of this episode with you know all other listeners and people who need to hear it. So thank you so much for tuning into this conversation today. Let's get into our chat with Tom. Welcome to the Happiness Happens podcast, Tom. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Simona. I'm really excited. Me too. I love these conversations. And what I love so much about you and about your company and everything you stand for and your mission is that it's very full. It feels very heart-centered and heart-driven. So I'm really excited to have a conversation about this. Thank you. Well, and, and it dovetails so well with the things you do. Exactly. And that's why I was like, oh, we have to have this yeah. conversation, the synergy <laughs> right. here. We have to have the conversation. <laughs> I love it. Now I'm going to ask you my first question. It's one that I ask all my guests right at the beginning okay. of the podcast. Sets the tone, sets the mood. I want to know what happiness means to you. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's such a subjective term. I right? know. It isn't an agreed upon <laughs> definition. So what's my personal definition Gosh, just those moments of being in the moment and in the flow, I would say it for me, it's not so much like a state that we arrive at. It's more like it's something that I think as human beings, we're always striving for. So for Mm -hmm. me, it's like that drive that I feel to be a better person, to experience life to challenge myself to learn Mm -hmm. to i would you know what else did it see that you you can see i'm kind of i'm I'm a little scattered because it's such a big thing there's so many things (laughs) i want but i also want to i know and i want to include them all alignment i really want to use that word because i think that's just essential people get into trouble when they're out of alignment so what does that mean when we're not doing the things that we really kind of when I say should, I mean like they're not, they're not uh, connected with our our value system. <clears throat> and when we are doing things that are within our value system, that that's aligned. Mm. And then I mean, just everybody wins because I feel better and I'm doing more good things. Um, so I'm sorry I don't have a better definition. I, I just think that's don't. a perfect <laughs> definition. I actually liked how you started it out though. You said flow and. What I think is so key with that is flow is such an important part of being and existing. And I think that we don't give ourselves the opportunity to always tap into that flow all the time. And then sometimes, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but sometimes like when you catch yourself in flow, 
then it's kind of like, I don't know, for myself, I very quickly can pull myself right back out of it. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, but oh, that was just such a wonderful 20 minutes or, or whatever that was. But that means you're doing something that lights your soul up, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I love right. that. Right. And yes, um, sometimes we can come out of it if we try to put words on it. We can go into our heads too much. Yes. Absolutely. And oh. right. It's, it's not well, like we have a mind for a really good reason. It's not that we want to totally throw that out. <laughs> it's just, yeah, we, we in our culture, we're trained to over think things mm. and not be so much in the present moment. And yes, that flow state, right? When I lose all track of time and I'm just totally in the experience. Oh, that's the best. Mm -hmm. I that's love amazing. that. I love that you said that. And I want to hear a little bit about your journey, how you kind of got to where you are right now. Um, and then we'll go into a little bit further about what you do and the, you know, I have, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pause myself or I'm going to spoil the question. So let just tell me a little bit about your journey um, and then we'll get into the rest of it. Well, let's see. I, so I'm a shrink. I'm a, I'm a psychologist. So, so I, the way I make money mostly is, you know, by doing psychotherapy mm. uh, with individuals, adults, some couples. I used to do a ton of group psychotherapy, um, but I'm not doing that so much. So I, and I've also done a ton of teaching. Mm. I was always drawn to the field since as long as I can remember. I had a phenomenal high school psychology teacher, Mr. Mm. Ryan, who, you know, because because human behavior is just infinitely fascinating, Simona. Everybody has a story. Yeah. And to me, it's just it, it never ends. It never ceases to amaze me. You know, when when you dig down enough, there's really good reasons people make the choices that they do. They're always it. So, so my work is endlessly fascinating. I love that. Oh, uh, thanks. Can I ask a question about that? Oh, sure. Do you know, do you think that people like with that reason of why people make choices, do you think that there are reasons why people make quote unquote good and quote unquote bad choices based mm -hmm. off of their circumstances? Totally. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what I mean. Like we do things that are sometimes quite self-destructive or, or destructive to others, but there's always a good reason if you peel the layers back if you really so what was really going on if you really mm. slow it down if we can if we can suspend shame a little bit right this is why psychotherapy works because because we create a trusting environment where somebody feels safe mm -hmm. right they they uh, learn to trust and believe that they're not going to be judged and mm. they're not and then they can settle in and say the truth and then, like I'm saying, the, 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 the layers get peeled back and there's always a really good motivation, even for what may seem in retrospect like a really bad choice. Yeah. It, was, it was for a good reason I was trying. And, and happiness is almost always there. Like most of us make the choices we do because we think it, they're going to lead us to, to be happier, even from you know, mm. buying whitening toothpaste, right? Yeah. <laughs> we want to have white teeth because we're, we're told that's more attractive and we're going to get more friends and lovers and <laughs> right. Just down to the simplest decision, right? To, I don't know what else? getting married. We get married because we think that's going to make us happier having, having children. Now, the truth is having children can often make us happier. Mm. It also makes us really miserable at times, right? Because it's really hard to have children. To raise children well is very, very difficult. To be married is a very challenging situation. Yeah. Um, it's great. I'm so glad I'm married. I'm so glad I have a kid. And my husband and my child are my two greatest teachers and my mirrors, right? They show mm. me all my shining glory and all my faults, yeah. right? They, they constantly show me. Uh, what it's like to be in relationship with me. And sometimes I, I need to do better and they mm -hmm. tell me and thank God they do. <laughs> sometimes exactly. I don't like it in the moment, but I, then I have an opportunity to go, Oh dang, you're right. I, I did have an edge in my voice then. And I didn't mean to be mean. Uh, I was hungry for it. And this is what I mean by peeling back the layers. Sometimes it's, it's like, like I have a, a low blood sugar deal. If I don't eat, you know, throughout the day, I can get bitchier. It's not good. <laughs> but it's just one example of what we're talking about. Like I, I, it's really important for me to stay fed so that 
I don't get mean to people. It's so true though. It's such a good point. And I think that it really does, because I also believe this as well, which is why I wanted to ask you that question. I truly believe that in every single circumstance, Ever, people are doing the best they can with what yes. they have and a lot yes. of the times I think people don't fully really fully understand what I what I mean when I'm saying that you know I'm not saying that if you did like a terrible terrible thing and hurt a ton of people that it was okay no Do you know what I mean there's a difference but oh totally wait but you have to take a second to understand the why behind why that particular yes. thing would have happened and I think yes. you know there would be so much more compassion in the world if we all had that understanding of, you know, the bigger why behind the reasons why people do the things that exactly. they do. Exactly. It's so important. Even if you don't so, agree with it, you know what I mean? Like even oh, if yeah. you take the craziest thing, like I won't, I won't go into like all the different details, but the way different pl places and, you know, people have handled the pandemic, for example, yes. there's always a why, whether you agree with it or not, right. you know, and I think yes. it, it creates this additional tolerance that we get to build up for other people that mm -hmm. we get to understand from someone else's perspective instead of just mm -hmm. blaming and judging each other that exactly. gets nowhere, really. Exactly. So two things. First, uh, Oprah has a fairly new book called What Happened to You? Mm. I've to add that to the show notes. And I love the title alone. I, I flipped through it. I haven't really read it, but the title alone, because it's, cause it's not like what's wrong. It's saying instead of asking what's wrong with you, yeah. The question is when, when we when someone else has a behavior that we don't understand, and we we're, you know you know we you know you're scratching our head. How did you? How could you possibly do that? Yeah. Something caused them to do that. It's almost always trauma, actually. When it's almost always, almost always. Absolutely. And then, yes, I love the other point, and it's just so that, that you made, and it's so worth underscoring. No, it's it's not. It doesn't give us a blank slate. Is that the right term? No, it doesn't yeah. give us, you know, freedom to, to do whatever we want. No, 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 no. Uh, I mean, to use a really extreme uh, example, uh, like child abuse, right? Mm -hmm. Child abusers. We're not excusing them. Yes, they almost always had have trauma in their backgrounds where we, it doesn't say oh okay so you get to keep doing that no no S stop the behavior number one mm -hmm. and you hear my voice gets really firm mm -hmm. no we still say no we still set limits mm -hmm. and it's still a, a wounded human being who is perpetrating wrong so let's mm -hmm. look at that and help them heal so that they can stop the behavior oh that is such a good point i think that's so important to highlight as well because that's the you know, what I've learned over the last little bit, that's the journey, right? Is, is, you know, for me, I, I kind of feel like sometimes it's like, how much healing can I do in one year? You know, but <laughs> <laughs> like, throw Enough it on already. me. What's Thank next? you, universe. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. I'm like, okay, universe, yeah. I understand. Thank mm -hmm. you. Or like, why mm -hmm. is this specific thing happening? And you know, it all leads to a bigger story and like a bigger purpose and all of those things that we go through in life, hard, you know, easy, good, bad, happy, sad, like those are all meant to be part of our experience that we can grow through that resiliently, I believe. Yeah. Um, and they hopefully learn yes. the lesson so you don't have to come back here again and yes. learn it again. <laughs> yes. And isn't that the thing? That's what I love that you're saying here. And this is what I see so much in my own life and in all the people I work with. Like we, the universe keeps providing us with opportunities to learn lessons. And then once we get it and we make a change, then the circumstances change. Then we don't keep running into the same kinds of situations, right? But when we see ourselves in similar parallel situations, you know, repeatedly, you know, again, like, let's, like, let's just, again, to use kind of an extreme example, just to make the point, like, say we're in a, we keep getting into relationships with people who are pretty mean to us. They don't meet our needs. They, they're verbally abusive or otherwise, you know, whatever. Okay, you got, at some point, it's like, okay, look, you have to own it, right? And it's not saying it's not saying you deserve to be treated that way. It's saying what's going on that's drawing you over and over again to the, a very similar type of person who treats you in a way that you don't like. What's up with that? Is there something in you that maybe needs some healing from you instead of looking externally? Is there something you need from yourself? You know, like to believe in yourself differently, for instance. 
And often that's a big piece of it. Like, oh, I don't deserve to be treated that way. And to say it positively, I deserve to be treated better. Like if we really claim that, that that's an internal belief. Once you believe that in your soul, you start looking for different kinds of people and you draw different kinds of people into your life. Absolutely. And you know, I actually want to expand on this just for a little bit here. Sure. How do you find that awareness? If you are that person who is attracting all of these things, you're not 100% sure why you keep having to learn the same lesson over and over again. So I have a lot of different friends in my life who, you know, find themselves in situations that they don't really want to be in, you know, whether it comes to relationships and all that kind of stuff, friendships and like romantically friendship, whatever. How can they start to develop that awareness piece? Yeah. How do they develop the awareness? I think, I'm going to say this first, Simona. It comes from relationship. That's what I want to, so, so what I mean by that, it comes from relationship. What I mean is find a trusted soul, a friend, a family member, someone you can, or maybe a therapist. Be real say the truth. This is what's going on. It's in relate like, like sometimes we can come to these awarenesses on our own that we do have epiphanies on our own. Sometimes it can happen in my experience. That's fairly rare. It's more common that the truth comes out when we say the truth to someone we trust, when we can bear our soul, when we can be vulnerable and we're with someone again that we trust. Um, the truth kind of comes out and we, and then we feel supported enough to be able to go to the next level. I think that's the only way really. What I do think, you think? I think that's a really great point. And you know, it's, thank you for asking me what I think, because sometimes I don't really know what I think about this particular thing because, you know, I think for, for, for my own self, like when I found myself there in the past, you know, I just had to, I don't, I, I like, I try and think about that moment in my life where everything shifted. Mm. And I think I was just so fed up with how shitty my life was. If you yeah. pardon my French, yep, but I was no so fed up with feeling like awful every single yeah. day. Yeah. And I think through that, I was able to kind of have this light bulb, light bulb moment of, okay, if I don't want this anymore, then I've got to choose something different because you know, it doesn't, you, you don't do the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. That's the definition of craziness. It literally right? is. I'm yeah, like, I'm they, not going up that the... tree. Do not yeah. make me go there. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> and, you know, it makes me think, though, because, like, I don't know. I, I just, I really do feel like people have to bring themselves there on their own. And so part of me sometimes thinks that, like, you know, maybe the people who get to have that awareness in life, that is their life path that they're meant to have that awareness in life. And maybe those who don't have that awareness are, in life are meant to either A, discover it at a different time in their life, or B, never kind of discover it and learn right. the lessons that they're meant to learn when they're here. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what I'm hearing, if I'm getting it, is you, you were miserable. You got to a oh, point yeah. where you were, you were probably kind of depressed. Oh, 100%. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Which I can Easy. relate to. Mm -hmm. Of course. And who can't? But I think, you know, what's interesting too, though, is like I, at the time, didn't even have the awareness that that was what depression was or felt right. like. Well, I had no idea. Just like right. I had no idea that like my high functioning mm -hmm. anxiety was anxiety. Mm -hmm. Like no idea. <laughs> yes. Yes. But, but here, so here's the thing. You, you did have the awareness of inside something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. so, so, the, so yeah, that is only in, sometimes it's external. Sometimes people who love us notice differences in our behavior and point it out to us. Super helpful when that happens. But yes, often mm -hmm. it's an internal knowing and just being open to my internal sensations, my internal signals. Wow, something isn't right or something isn't right or something isn't right. But then I think the next step, I think I think the healing mostly comes, and it's, it's this strange dichotomy because on the one hand, yes, all of our healing, ultimately we have to do ourselves. Yes, that there's truth in that statement, but also it it comes out of relationship. In my experience, it, it healing really comes by being in connection with another person. Like 
Like oh. both are true. It's not one or the other. We have to have both. Oh, that is so good. I'm so glad that you said that because it's so true. How would you ever, like you were saying earlier with your family, like they are a mirror for you. And so other people in turn are always mirrors for us, regardless of the situations we find ourselves in. Yes. And like, how do we begin to look at the things within ourselves that maybe we don't want to look at? Well, somebody else is going to point that out to us. And I've been recently going through something like this. Nothing that I want to share openly and publicly yeah. on the podcast, sure. but you know, it, it's very interesting when you look at somebody else and you see all of these things that might feel like very confusing or very like like a hole. And you're like, where did this come from? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It was like, but five minutes ago, I was totally fine. And now all of a sudden I have this whole can of worms now that I've got to deal with. You know what I mean? And it's very interesting to me because I feel like that journey happens when you're least expecting it. And I also think that it's so important to just like have that awareness that like, you know, you may heal one thing and then the healing that one thing may actually come back around and turn into something completely different. You don't even know why you have to go through that specific thing. Yes, it's so true. The never ending kind of the evolution, right? And we think, oh, I've done it. Okay, I've arrived. And then, whoa, hello. No, you haven't. <laughs> that was well, the first stop. Yes. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love it. Okay, Tom, I want to shift a little bit into more of your work and more of all the amazing things that you do. Before we go into your business and your mission and all of that, all of that, I want to talk about what full heart living means to you. Like, what does oh, that mean? Yes. Well, so my, the subtitle of my book, Full Heart Living, is Conversations with the Happiest people I know. So I interviewed mm -hmm. people I personally know who are extraordinarily happy. Other, otherwise, totally ordinary. They're not celebrities or, you know, millionaires. And what I really, and, and, and initially my, my working title was Happiness Heroes was one of them. Or, you know, I had all kinds of, there were all kinds of other ideas for the title, but I was, but I realized that happier people live from the whole heart. So yeah, what does that mean? Happier people don't suppress, you know, so-called so negative emotions. They live with the wholeness of their heart. So we're even extraordinarily happy people are not happy all the time, Simona. Like, like the rest of us, they get down sometimes. Can you expand on that, Tom? Because I want to know, and I want our listeners to know that it's okay to not be okay and you can still feel happy. Please expand on that. Well, exactly. To use kind of the reverse example, tons of people I work with who are suffering from a lot of anxiety and or a lot of depression are trying to suppress the anxiety or the depression or something else. They're trying to avoid it. They don't want to have the feeling. And I can't blame them. It's not comfortable to feel sad. It's not comfortable to be depressed or to have a lot of anxiety. I understand. I get it. And it's a part of human experience. To be on this plane is to sometimes be worried and to sometimes be sad. And happier people embrace that as well. So when they're sad, they allow themselves to be sad. They don't, you know, dwell in it. They don't make it worse. But they know it's temporary. They know it's there. And they tend to themselves. They provide compassion and support to themselves so that they can get through it. Kind of like when we have the flu, we know we're going to get through it. We, you know, put on a couple extra blankets, throw in a DVD or put on Netflix, drink orange juice, take some aspirin. Like, like they provide themselves the things they need, knowing that they're going to get through it. What does that mean for anxiety or depression? It might mean looking at the things they say to themselves, uh, looking at those negative tendencies to have self-talk or, or, or self-beliefs that are super harmful and usually not true and finding replacements for them. It might be having, you know, more time with loved ones. It might be going out for walks in the woods. Yeah. There's so many different things that can contribute to that. And I think that there's a lot to highlight there too, right? I mean, you know, it's not something that is black and white. You know what I mean? It's something that is very like fluid. And I think that, you know, I know for myself, like when I was, especially when I was younger, I've always been someone that's been 
more optimistic. I, I live my life through rose colored glasses. I'm not ashamed to say that because I like living there and it's a good place to be. <laughs> but I also, also yeah. can dim the rose colored glasses a little bit and be able to tap into the things that need to be addressed or like that need to be healed. Like I'm not oblivious and like going through my life, like completely naive. And <laughs> I was going to say, but, but you keep using and, and I like that. And at the same time, you get to be unhappy if you need to be, you know what I mean? And for a long time, a lot of my family would put conditions on that. They'd be like, well, you talk about happiness all the time and you always preach about happiness and you this and you that and your podcast is about happiness and all these different things. Not really realizing that, yes, I speak about happiness and like trying to understand what happiness means to people. But with the idea of happiness comes the ability and the permission to be unhappy also. Yes. Right? Well, that's what so many people who who don't study happiness believe. And, and they, then they just dismiss it. Yeah. Oh, it's just, you know, you're just in denial. And they're like, no, 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 they're wrong. Exactly. You, that's ignorance speaking. Exactly. Right. If you really look deeply, the scholars talk about exactly what you're saying. And what I'm saying and why I decided to name my book Full Heart Living because it's embracing all of life. Mm. which is complicated and much more in the gray. You're right. It's not black or white. And when we can embrace those harder things, then we make room also for the glorious things in this world. I mean, the taste of peanut butter, my Mm. God. (laughs) I know. The the (laughs) view of flowers, the view of Scott. You like peanut butter too. I do. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Throw some dark chocolate in there and mix it all up. (laughs) Oh man. Oh, please. (laughs) Go to town with that. (laughs) So yeah, it's not, you don't have to be, it, it isn't either or. I can enjoy my peanut butter and dark chocolate and uh, it helps doing that helps me do the things show up in a mm-hmm. way that helps me have the energy to be able to confront the things that yes there's many troubling things in our world right now that need a lot of attention mm-hmm. how do we have the energy to do that yeah I, uh, happiness helps resilience helps and mm-hmm. happier happier people by the way do and i'm sure you know this way more good things in the world, right? Mm-hmm. Happier people donate more money. They volunteer more. They help other people feel happier just by their presence, right? It's because of the contagion effect. Happiness is contagious. So that's another reason I wanted to study this stuff and, and, and write this book on this topic because when I'm with happier people talking about what makes them tick, kind of like I'm sure you're, this podcast, I'm sure this is the same for you, right? Yeah. It's... I'm sure it's so fun for you to have these conversations because I love it. Inspired, yeah. I love it. I love it. And you know, for a while too, I had like shifted the podcast. I, I, it was a couple years ago. It was very different. Then I shifted, and I was like, you know what? I really want to focus on understanding what happiness means to people, because I feel like there's such a lack of like really deep conversations and understanding other people's perspectives as we go through life and like why people do the things that they do, like we were talking about earlier. And I think this gives a good home to that. You know what I mean? And it doesn't have to be anything more than just amazing conversations about happiness and, you know, sharing the stories of people who have pioneered some of the most incredible things like yourself in this, in this industry. So I think it's so important. And so with your new book, which we are going to link in the show notes, would you say that it's the main thing that they'll learn by reading the book is ultimately how to have that more fulfilling and, you know, happier centered life, if you will? Yeah. And I will, I will tell you, spoiler alert, uh, cause it's so important. Uh, happier people do several things just in a nutshell. They connect really deeply with other people. Mm. They connect really deeply with themselves. They're mindful. They're in the present moment. They honor their natural rhythms. They connect mm-hmm. deeply with passions. They do things they enjoy and they do a ton of them, which brings them into that flow state that you and I started this conversation I with. I love that. And they give back. They do mm-hmm. good things. They make the world a better place. So, so there's uh, there's 20 chapters. There's other things like self-care and living in alignment with your values, which we already briefly touched on, but, uh, those are the top things Mm. hands down. 
Beautiful. Thank you so much, Tom, for sharing this time with me today. I have loved our conversation me together. Me too, Simona. This is great. So great. And I would love if you could let everyone know where they can find you. Fullheartliving.com is the best place. There's, I also have a YouTube channel and I'm on Facebook and, and Instagram a little bit. Look up Full Heart Living, all, all those places. There's a Amazing. free workbook on uh, fullheartliving.com. Perfect. We'll put all of those links in the show notes. So everyone can access it very easily. And I'm going to ask you my last question. It's one I've asked probably for the last three years. Um, I ask all my guests when they come on the podcast, and I always love the answers that I get when I, when I hear the responses. And it is, how can someone live a happier life? Or how can someone live a happier day every day starting today? Mm. Pick up the phone. Talk to your neighbor mm. over the fence. It's my favorite thing to do. I think they hate me for that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to the person at the bus stop. Yeah. J- j- just engage. Just engage. I love that. And you know what the underlying theme of that to me sounds like when you say that is like genuine kindness and just yes. caring for other people. Like, yes. you know, yeah, the people on the street, wheel, you know, you walk down the road, everyone lives a separate life, but you know, one of my, my, my neighbors joke around and like the neighbors have a small dog and uh, my neighbors joke around. Like every time I take the dog for a walk, my dog has more friends than I do for sure. He's like <laughs> friends with every single do- dog in the neighborhood. But the byproduct of that is I've met a lot of neighbors who live in, in the neighborhood and What's super fun about that is I get to hear about their lives and their stories. And so I was going for a walk once with one of my neighbors a couple weeks ago, and we were going to go for like an hour and we were just walking around and from where I live to like the main street to cross over and like continue our walk. I think we had stopped to talk to probably 10 people and it was all people that I had just met going out for a walk. And she jokingly was like, if you stop and talk to one more person, I'm turning around, I'm going, I'm going home. <laughs> and, I was like, and I was like, it's not my fault. Like, I just love to talk to other people. Oh my gosh. So I love that you, you shared that tip because honestly it brings you a lot of joy, you know, yes, and it just really does. So thank you for sharing that. Well, it's simple, right? That's yeah. so simple. It doesn't cost anything, a little really energy doesn't. maybe, I guess, but it gives back so much more energy. Exactly. So. Exactly. And I would say too, amplifies the energy of like just every everything around you that that touches exactly. afterwards so. exactly oh tom this has been wonderful thank you again oh, thank you thanks so much everyone for tuning in to this week's episode on the happiness happens podcast please be sure to connect with us online let us know you're listening be sure to grab tom's download in the show notes below and if you have any questions let us know hope you have a lovely week and remember that happiness happens when you're least expecting it